Welcome back to KSP 101. I believe this is episode 14. I apologize, the game crashed on me in the last episode while we were building the rest of that vessel. Hopefully, it quick saved, or hopefully, I saved to where we didn't lose too much progress, so there won't be as much to do. But we will find out here shortly when we pick back up, hopefully where we left off, but we're not going to let us stop us. We're going to keep going. We're going to finish this vessel, and we are going to take it to Ike. So it should load up here in just a moment, and then we will see just how much progress we lost. Once we get to the main menu here, something else I haven't covered in this series is loading the game and resuming the game, going to the start game off the menu, resume saved, <laughs> and then going to your save file and hitting X or A to load it. <laughs> so now that we've covered that bit that we've never had to worry about, when this happens, if the game crashes while you're building, just go back straight to the VAB and hopefully whatever you've been working on auto saved or you saved creating a quick save auto save for your um, persistent file let's go to open craft and see just how much we lost oh looks like we lost a decent bit but let's find out okay well not too bad we still have all the way down to the rhino stage so that's okay alright so let's pick back up where we left off let's grab our TD 37 decoupler. We'll place it there and set it the grandparent part. I'm going to try to just run through this quickly because I already made a large portion of this in the last video, so I'm just going to try to catch up really fast to where we were by not explaining too much about I already explained it once in the last video, and you can always just check out that last video for a better explanation of how I'm doing what I'm doing right now to this as we speak. It's also a bit self-explanatory if you've been watching the rest of the series. You should be fairly well caught up on how to do all this, but I digress. This is why... I save so much. So let's move this back up and finish this vessel and get this thing into space and off to Ike, shall we? Alright. Let's grab the Rhino. And there's a reason why I'm using that. You will see when we launch that the four outer stages will be enough to get it to where that Rhino is. Pushing more kilonewtons of thrust and a higher point in the atmosphere by the time we eject those four outer stages. So that's not so bad. We just need to now strut these back up again. A little more control. It's a little more cooperative where I reloaded the game. Not by choice, but that's okay. Let's get these up here below these. Place them. It's much more cooperative though, so I'm pretty grateful for that even though it would have been better to just finish the vessel and not have to break this into two 30 minute episodes but it'll be okay gotta get over that real quick it happens don't let it get you down just keep on trucking and let's finish what we started shall we okay now we have our struts let's get our decouplers center of that stage. I like to use these instead of the others. They're way more reliable. And the center of the stage will be about there. Let's set it to four. That is not four. <laughs> Let's try it again. Radial four. There we go. Set to its grandparent part. Now I'm going to pick back up where we left off. Going back to the jumbos. Making those orange this time. So I don't have to worry about doing that after we place those, put another four around there. 
set both of those to grandparent part, and we're going to break out the reaction control wheels. It was about that time it cut us last time, so let's save our progress and wait for that to do its thing. Good. Let's grab the reaction, con con the reaction control wheels, and we'll place those on. Remember, the bottom will be the heaviest part strutting this time, and we will move up to the top for the root part. Set that to root, copy it, and it was about here where it got us last time. Let's hope it doesn't this time. Go to our aerodynamics, grab the cone, make sure it's orange, nice orange and pretty. We will set that to grandparent part. Looking good now. Now we just need to asparagus stage this and strut it up. Let's go down to the bottom, put the main sails on, set those to root. After we get that done, we will grab our fuel line. And unlike the last asparagus staging, these are set to four, so we don't have to worry about doing any tricky stuff to strut them faster. Let's grab the fuel tanks, put them right under our decoupler here, set to radial four. Let's go inside the fuel tank and zoom in, and set that to the central fuel tank stage. And we will grab our struts and finish this thing off. And I've put the mass to the lowest mass parts to the top that time. I'm going to put three sets of struts on the nose cones. Go up as high as we can and set these as high as we can. As soon as we see a connection, we will place these and let them strut wherever they may strut. Ah, there we go. Looks like they're about there. Let's set them there. Let's hit our stick in a couple times to get rid of that little strut menu. Zoom back in, down on the nose cone. To do that, just use the left shoulder button and the right stick to zoom in and out. And hold the right trigger and move left and right or up and down. To do that, so let's move on, put these at the center of the nose cone, strut those up as high as they can go, should be just below these, so let's place those just below there, very good, now let's grab our last set of nose cone struts, and we will try to set that right in line with that central stage, putting those here towards the bottom of the nose cone, and then just a little above there and lined up centered with this tank once it starts to shift around we'll know that we're at the center so we'll place it there <coughs> once it places we can move on to strutting these tanks to the central stage from the tanks themselves let's find the this is not a good view <laughs> Let's find the center of one of these tanks. Looks about to be right there. And we'll zoom in on the tank and try to set these a little higher, if possible. If not, go a little lower, whatever you have to do, to strut those to the central uh, tank. We'll go below that decoupler to where these two tanks are. Zoom in. Try to strut those to the central tank as close as possible to where you place that on the outer tanks. Well, now we're going to the bottom, except we're going to have to place it on the central tank where it's up higher. We'll place it about here, and then strut those close to the center and bottom of this tank. Just try to find a good line of sight to do that. It looks like it's going to be about here. And now, we need to strut these outer tanks together. So let's go to the bottom, place this inside of that little gray part, and strut it over to the gray part on this one. And we will go up to the 
upper gray portion of those outer tanks. Strutting them again that way. And there's that lag again. It'll be alright. We will finish this. Hopefully it just doesn't cut us off again. Alright, so let's strut one more time the gray to gray on the outer tanks. As soon as we get that done, we should have all the strutting necessary completed. We have our fuel lines ready. We just need to set some aerodynamics now. So let's go down to our aerodynamic parts. Get the winglets here. Let's turn on our center mass overlay, thrust overlay, aerodynamic overlay, and first we'll place these right under those struts, but right above those cones where the nozzles are for the engines there. And we'll set that to grandparent part. Then we're gonna grab another set of these and find out what it'll do if we place these down here on these outer tanks, if they'll cooperate. Let's close that menu first by placing this here, doing that, and then grabbing it. Okay. Now we may have to do a little bit of jerry-rigging here, but we'll find out. Let's place these here, then move them over one, two spaces. Uh, let's make it three, just to be safe. Let's place that there. And then, without moving our mouse, click in, grab another set, move back to the center, and then move over one, two, three, and place them again. Oh, there we go. Looks like they're a little high, doesn't it? Let's grab those and move them down to where it's nice and flush with the engine mount. Come on, there we go. Doesn't look like we still have our aerodynamic point between the center of mass and thrust. So we are going to have to get a little ugly here. But first, let's set these to grandparent part, and then we will grab another set of these, and we'll place them in between those. Still not quite enough. Lord, okay. We'll just put these here, then. And we need to make sure that they are nice and flush with the connection of the fuel tank and the engine. We'll just go to the other side and place two more. So we'll have four on the outer tanks. But before we do that, set these to grandparent part. And so we don't have to set those to grandparent part again. Let's just hold square or X and hit A or X. Or I mean uh, X or A. To copy it, place it over here on this side. And we should... Oh, how is that still too high? Okay, there's a way to fix this. We'll just put another set of winglets here. Except we'll take these, move them over one space, placing them close to about there, to where the top of the winglet is reaching the line above it, nice and flush. And then we'll copy it. Do the same thing over here on this side. Now, our center of aerodynamics, uh, our, our, our aerodynamic point is below the center of mass and above the center of thrust. And, if we let this space here open and available to put these launch stabilizers. However, before we do, let's check our mass. So this is going to push 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 2, 11, 4, about 11.5 kilonewtons of thrust, or 11,500 kilonewtons of thrust, which should be enough to push the 900 tons. So now let's uh, save our progress just in case something happens again, and grab these stability enhancers, find the center of mass on the spot relative to the outer tanks, about here, place them there. And 
then let's look at how raised up off the ground this is. That's not too bad. It will bounce a little bit once we place it on the launch pad though, but it'll be okay. Let's uh, leave those four to stage above the stability enhancers. Let's put these four also above those stability enhancers and this rhino beneath that. And make sure that those four are going to stage and then the central stage will go off and we'll activate the second Rhino engine. By then we should be in space, hopefully in orbit, ready to transfer. And we'll have our little fuel tank relay here. It'll go off and it will undock. We can still decide what to do with the nose cone at any point in time. We have all of our asparagus staging on our lander set and the central stage set to decouple. We have all those drug chutes ready to go off before all the main chutes. At some point, we may have to be cautious about where these are placed. In fact, we're not trying to get rid of any of those until we get to Duna and we're taking off. So let's group all of our lander stages decoupling together and just take those and move those above our parachutes for now so we don't accidentally get rid of those too soon. Because we are trying to take all those from Ike to Duna to land on Duna and then use them once we take off from Duna which means we're going to be using all these chutes long before we reach that point. And that should be our nose cone. Very good. Now, let's save the vessel. And then we need to leave our VAB and return to the Space Center and upgrade our VAB and hopefully have enough money to do that so we can have an unlimited part count and be able to take this and launch it from the launch pad. I think the launch pad is already fully upgraded, so mass should not be an issue, but we'll find out. I'll take a swig of this coffee real quick. Now, unfortunately, I may have only about 15 minutes, maybe 45 minutes, to finish this. Alright, the launch pad is good. We have plenty of money. Let's upgrade that VAB. Is our tracking station fully upgraded? No. Well, how much is this going to cost us to launch? The D2 cost 510000 That's not bad. We have the research and development fully upgraded. That's fully upgraded. This is fully upgraded. That's fully upgraded. The only thing left to fully upgrade is our tracking station. Let's do it. Let's also check our mission control just in case. Okay, so I think we're ready to go. Let's make a primary quick save real quick. And then we will also do actual quick save. Never hurts to be redundant. And we'll go to our tracking station so we can get our transfer alignment lined up and ready to go. Aha, okay, so that's finally an orbit around the sun. Heh, alright, let's get rid of it. It's not going anywhere else. Let's see where this is now. Looks like it's probably going to make its way back into Dune in space. We don't want that. Let's get rid of that. The KSS doesn't look like a station to me. Let's highlight it and go to our info panel. And then double tap its name. Push the stick in on the left and then hit triangle to highlight station, and then hit circle or B on the Xbox. Close that. Ah, didn't work. Okay. Let's, I hit the wrong button. Let's do that again and hit X or A on the Xbox. Now it's a station. Then let's close this. Put our focus using the right shoulder button on Kerbin. Open the warp menu with triangle or Y. Set it to max. If we hit square, should. Okay, good. And once that 
relay connection is in line with the edge of Kerbin's orbit lined up with Duna. We will hit square and cut the warp so we can fine-tune this window, this trajectory window. Zoom in a little bit until the Duna starts to fade away a little bit and zoom back out until it starts to come back so we can keep an eye on this. As you can see the orbit is getting closer to the relay line. And once it's to the point where it's going to start pushing beyond Kerbin's orbital line, we're going to cut that off because that's right where we want to be for this launch window. Starting to be starting to get close to it. Zoom out a little bit so we can get a better view, then we'll zoom back in. It's getting real close. Get right up on top of it. Alright, let's go ahead and cut it right about now. And then we can zoom in real quick. We can see that we still have a little ways to go. Do a short burst of that. Zoom back out. Let Duna turn nice and blood red again. Zoom back in. Time warp ahead just a little bit more and cut it off. And then zoom back out. Let Duna re-highlight itself. Zoom back in. We are pretty much right where we need to be. So we'll take what we have, leave the tracking station, and prepare to launch this thing. Alright, now that we are lined up, let's make another quick save so we don't have to do that again just in case anything happens. Go to our launch pad. It's time for the real deal. Let's go down to our M2, or sorry, our D2. We want Valentina to be our pilot since she is more experienced. We have Bill, our engineer for the breaking ground modules and our parachutes, and Bob for the science modules and onboard science. Let's hit the left shoulder button to re-highlight our vessel and hit X to launch it. <coughs> now, where there are so many parts on this vessel, it is going to be laggy at first. The launch will take longer. It will be harder to control but we will get through this. We will make this happen. It's not that bad. It's a little bit of a headache for some. For the dedicated, they don't care. They'll push through it. And that's what I'm going to do. Because I like making very complicated, large, crazy vessels. <laughs> It's easier just to do this in separate launches for some, but I like to get it all over with in one launch. So once it loads, you can see the meters per second fluctuating. We want to wait until that stabilizes. Since it's daytime, we don't have to warp and worry about it having to re-stabilize. So we'll just go ahead and let it stabilize for now. Once it does, We'll activate our SAS throttle up and launch. We'll give it about 10 to 15 seconds from here. By then it should be nice and stable. Give it about 5 more seconds. 4, 3, 2, 1. I'm going to activate the SAS throttle up and we are launching and crossing our fingers, but we should be okay. Picking up speed, that's a good sign. <laughs> and again, the more fuel we use up on these outer stages, the faster it's going to pick up speed. We want to make sure we're nice and in line with that prograde mark when we decouple, or else we might our central stage. We have to be very careful about that. And we're 
not cutting our engine off when we do that this time. Because we want to keep pushing away from those outer stages. It could get dangerous. We'll find out. If it does, I think we have the Separatron boosters that we can put onto the tanks to move them away from the central stage when we decouple, if necessary. We'll find out. It's also why I'm using those decouplers too. They push those away a lot better, I think. It'll also be high enough in the atmosphere for it to not be too much of a threat, I think. Let's go ahead and start moving over towards that 80 mark. Nice and smooth and slow. Trying to stay on that 90 degree inclination. We'll stop on the 90 mark first. Making sure our inclination is at 90. Locking our probe rate. Once it hits about 175 meters per second, begin moving towards that 80. It's a very precarious launch from a very precarious vessel here. We just gotta take it nice and smooth, trying to make sure that we can keep ourselves centered in the center of the prograde mark on our nav ball when it comes time to stage. Let's lock our SAS there, move it up a pair and relock it on a 90 degree inclination. There we go. Let's try to keep it here and keep an eye on that to stay centered on our prograde mark, because it's almost time to stage and start praying. <laughs> Once it's there, here in just a few seconds, we'll see what happens. As long as we're nice and in line with that prograde center point when we do this. Let's go ahead and stage. Cross your fingers. <laughs> we're a little off. switch to orbit mode. In fact, let's go ahead and move on over to 
about the 10 degree mark. At a 90 degree inclination and lock our SAS there. Let it continue to climb to 70,000 while it also starts to push sideways to assist in the orbit a little early. The stage is rocking. That Rhino should hopefully be enough to get us to Duna and Ike. This stage here will be fairly close to finishing around the time we make orbit, but we'll see. We might have to dip into that tank that we're using to refuel at Ike, but I hope it'll be enough. We'll find out. It might become a deep space relay if that's the case. I certainly hope not then. I have to send another tank out there to refuel. Now that we're at 70,000, let's go full sideways, maybe at about negative 5 here, at a 90 degree inclination. Let it finish its increase to 100,000 meters. Once it hits about 100,000, we will cut the engine off, hopefully not having to stage before then. We'll find out. stick to going to 100,000. We are gaining speed faster and faster as it goes. We're not quite at the Carmen line yet, which is 70,000 for Kerbin. We're getting there. And 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Cut the engine close enough. Let's lock prograde. It's not going to take a whole lot to finish this orbit off. We've almost halfway circularized. We will only have to increase it by almost what's left in this fuel tank, but we'll find out. It's taking a lot to move it over where we didn't add more um, reaction control wheels for the bottom of the center stage, so let's just warp to about a minute away from the apoapsis. We should be in space now. And here in a few seconds we will be. And when we are, we'll warp to about 2.15 ahead of us. See, if we cut off 2 minutes and 9 seconds, that should be good. Let's warp there. That'll give it time to realign itself with the prograde mark. Just in time for us to finish our burn, hopefully. Let's do a little rotation first while we're at it, while we're waiting. And also while we're waiting, we can go to our secondary vessel relay there and extend its solar panels instead of the upper stage. That's a little less complicated. We have time to do it though. We may go ahead and do it. That's two, this is three, but we need to check our time to our apoapsis after we set those. Let's see, we have about 45 seconds. I think that's enough time to hurry, go up here, and extend these two solar panels. Should still have at least 30 seconds or so. Once it hits about 10 seconds, maybe 15, probably 10, we'll finish this circularization. There won't be enough in this stage, though. I don't believe. And we can see our target marker starting to slowly creep its way towards our prograde mark. But we have time. Because we're going to be about here, whenever they're in line. So let's zoom out. <clears throat> so we can see our orbital line. Once it hits about 10 seconds, I'm going to throttle up and try to finish this off. Hopefully with just this stage, we'll find out. Let's activate our resources. When they're uploaded, they'll be at uh, 1080p, and they can be set to 1080p. Uh, my connection probably isn't the best right now. 
I apologize for that. Let's go ahead and finish our circularization now with this stage, the second Rhino engine. As soon as that periapsis pops out, let's highlight it and try to quickly make this circularization and prepare for the transfer burn. Once it hits about 99 and you see those start to flop, we'll cut it off once they flop about halfway, or flip right about there. It's close enough. And let's time warp until that target mark is relatively close to our prograde so it has time to realign itself. We'll use a little bit of monopropellant to do that, but I don't like to use monopropellant for anything but landing or docking because it can mess with your orbital line. So let's let that line back up. Oh, that's right, we did kick that large stage. So now it's easier to line back up. Alright, so let's time warp ahead just a little more until that target dips into our prograde. About that much. Let's go to Duna. Again. <laughs> Not sure how many times we've been in this tutorial series so far, but I think three. Let's see. The flyby and return. The first relay. Then the relay with the lander, right? Oh, and the station core, so we've been there four times. This will be our fifth time. So now let's hope there's enough in this Rhino stage to at least get us out of the Kerbin system. That'd be nice. Maybe should have added a little more. Might have to dip too much into that fuel relay stage, but we'll find out. Let's see, it has half of its fuel tank left. Once it's down to about eight or nine thousand, it'll be out of fuel. On the oxidizer's resource bar here. Hopefully it'll be enough to reach escape speed. If not, we'll be okay. We'll make it happen. <coughs> we might have to disengage prograde and move up to about here to keep our trajectory on point though. It's looking like it should be down to a quarter tank or less. We might have to use a good bit of that um, mainsail um, stage to finish this off. It's a bit of a shame, really, but it's okay. Starting to move out real quick now. Let's just make sure it does escape. It doesn't. Okay, so let's go ahead and stage. Cut our engine. Bring the throttle back up nice and smooth. Very quickly go back to the map and zoom out. Let's cut that engine just in case we lose sight of our transfer. <laughs> Okay, now let's bring it back up. We're not off too much there, that's okay. Let's go back to full throttle. Focus on Duna. And once we are close to getting our encounter, it's going to be a hair beyond Duna's orbit, I believe, from the looks of it. But we'll see. Once it gets close, we'll throttle down just a hair. Continue to throttle down bit by a little bit. Once we see that encounter mark, let's carefully watch it. Once they get nice and close, we'll cut the engine. Yeah, it's extending just a little bit beyond Duna. That's okay then. Alright, let's cut. Slowly move it in. As soon as we see that encounter happen, cut that engine quickly. Let's zoom in on Duna and see what we're looking at. Oh wow, that's much closer than it was on its uh, vertical axis. It's um, oh whoa, okay. We need to uh, point point retrograde now. And while it's reorienting itself, let's turn the thrust limiter down to about five or so. That'll do. 
We still have a good bit of fuel on this stage. All right, that's that's good, at least. But we're still going to have to use it to make our um, orbit around Ike, at least. Hopefully there's some left over. I don't want to lose too much fuel in our lander because this we need to take it to Duna, too. I'd hate to have to launch this again. But if we have to, we have to. All right, let's move this in and set Ike as our target now. Zoom in. Once it gets close to Ike's line, we're going to cut the engine off. And then set the thrust limiter to as close to zero as possible. That's pretty close. I'll take that. Let's save the game just in case anything happens. Now, any time from now in the next 24 minutes, I might have to abruptly cut this off. I apologize in advance. Well, let's highlight our closest approach there. And this is good because it's looking like it's going to force us to the other side of Duna where we want to be. So we can stay on the 90 degree side instead of the 180 degree side, or I guess 270. Let's move it on over until we get that encounter, or as close to it as possible. Might have to point normal. And thanks to having a pilot with us this time, and not just a probe that has leveled up a decent amount here. Wow, she's had 10 flights at Duna. That doesn't add up now, does it? Probably because we've been in and out of Duna's various biomes and so on, I'm not sure, but once we're pointed at the normal mark, let's make sure the Ike orbital line is flush with itself, and move it on down, hopefully. Zoom in closer so we can take a look. Yep, it's moving down. Go full throttle. Cut the throttle, actually, so we can set the limiter back up to about 10 or so. That'll work. That way it'll move a little quicker and we're not wasting too much time. Once it's nice and flush with that orbital line of Ike, we'll cut the engine like so. And we will go back to retro. And we will also go back to being as close to zero on our thrust limiter as possible. Not directly at zero though, because then we won't go anywhere. That's good enough. Let's also quick save one more time once it locks on to retrograde. Once we're there, let's do that quick save, and then we will try to get this Ike encounter now. That should be either very close or wildly off, but it'll be okay. Let's finish this off now. We want to make sure that we're on the... like this side of Ike, like we are on this side of Duna which we'll see once it starts to wrap back around and go inward, I believe. Like it's about to do. See, that's a bit far, but we'll take it. And we're not going to be able to see where we're going to end up relative to Ike until we leave Kerbin's sphere of influence. So for now... Let's highlight this, do a quick save just in case it throws us off too much when we manually time warp ahead just one space. We can also highlight this periaps to make sure to get a better view of how much it moves. Keep a very close eye on that encounter line and tap it over just once manually on the warp. I moved this out pretty far, but we still have the encounter. Once we leave Kerbin's Sphere of Influence, we can adjust it. For now, let's go up to one off from max warp. And once it cuts down automatically, we should see our Ike Apoapsis. Or Periap, sorry. 601,000. That's not bad. Let's uh, set it to prograde and then cut our time warp. And once it locks prograde, We'll do another quick save just in case. Don't like to use it a whole lot 
you, you won't see me reload a quick save unless it's absolutely necessary. Once we are on that prograde line, we will do the quick save and bring that Ike periapsis in to about, I want to say, 20,000. That should be good. Alright, we're lined up. Let's do that quick save and then slowly bring that in. Let's put our focus on Ike. Zoom in so we can get a nice look at this. Looks like we're going to be coming in at a decent angle, like we wanted. Once it gets relatively close to 20,000, we will cut the engine. Let's tap it in just a little bit. Oof. Um, we'll take it. Okay, for now. Let's do a quick save, and we will time warp ahead manually just once. Didn't change it much. Perfect. Okay, now let's time warp to the beginning. Oh, we can't warp that far. Okay, let's uh, warp to our encounter, as close to it as possible then. So it's a year, 25 days, and 2 hours, you say. We are there then. Alright. We'll keep the focus on Ike where it is. We'll exit warp mode and let it do its thing. Go to our vessel view. We have a nice... Looks like I might be able to keep going longer, folks. Looks like we might have another 45 minutes to go. So we'll extend this episode to make up for it being cut abruptly in the last one due to the game crashing. <clears throat> so we'll be able to get a good bit done. All of our resources are looking mighty fly. Still have a good bit of fuel left on that stage. I'd like to get a nice good view of this vessel. She's a beaut. It's one of the largest landers I've made for Duna, outside of like my starship um, replications, but usually I use three, if not two, outer tanks. But in this tutorial, I like to over-engineer, just in case anybody needs that extra oomph, and so on. But I digress. It is also probably why it took more than I thought it was going to take to uh, get these two stages to Duna. But it's okay. I'm also noticing that I forgot to add more RCS thrusters down here. And that shouldn't present too much of a problem, I don't think. It's really only necessary because I was going to use those to dock with this, saving the RCS on this vessel for other things, like docking with the space station. And I also just realized we don't have anywhere for a Kerbal to transfer into on this to get the transfer between vessels around Ike, so we might have to do a little fooling around with our station that we have around Duna, but we'll make it happen one way or the other. We should be creeping up on Duna now, it should be getting close to being within sight. Let's try to find out where it's going to be. I'm expecting it to be somewhere like over here. There it is. Hello, Duna. Goodbye, Duna. And hello, Ike. And we should be very close to that Ike encounter now. Should be popping into it. Yep, there we go. Alright, now. Let's try to point radial out and move that periapsis to about 20,000. And just for the fun of it, let's turn some lights on. Yeah, looking pretty cool. I'm all about some aesthetics. It's pretty. It's pretty. We can actually save some Delta V by going on ahead and popping those. That's a little more Delta V, not a whole lot though, right? 
And honestly, since we have those fins on that lander, you know, I'm not too worried about losing this nose cone. Let's get rid of it. And lose a little bit more weight. Try to lose as much weight as possible. And we don't want to hit that nose cone now, do we? So let's go to docking mode by hitting triangle or Y on the Xbox. Oh, and in doing so, off, uh, uh, turning on our docking mode, make sure we are in linear control mode and hold L1 or the left shoulder button and hit circle or B on the Xbox to turn our RCS on and move the stick to the left or right, your call, so we can shift out of alignment with that nose cone just a wee bit there, we'll turn the RCS off go back to staging mode and let's warp a little bit to get that nose cone out of our line of sight once it's about let's see there we'll cut our warp go back to our map mode whoa let's bring that back up if that ever happens just hit this to bring it back up that little downward pointing triangle go back to our map mode which you can open in the radial menu or by hitting both shoulder buttons at the same time highlight our periaps and burn radial out very smoothly and slowly see that's not really a whole lot of thrust let's put it at about 25 maybe 15 yeah 15 will work let's highlight the periaps again and push it out to about 20,000 or so and that should be good to make our orbit around Ike once we have that, we will cut it off, quick save, and then we will orient ourselves to retrograde. And then we will go back to our engine, set the thrust limiter back up to 100. Oh no, that thing's coming in fast, isn't it? Let's hope we reorient before it knocks into us. <laughs> Gonna have a nice close encounter with that tiny nose cone around Ike. Oh, it's gonna go right under us. <laughs> uh, can actually even swap over to it and watch ourselves fly by. You can do that by holding the left shoulder button and hitting left or right on the D-pad. Make sure to swap back before it gets too far away though or you'll have to switch back via the map. It's very cool though. I like that. Alright, let's swap back. Now, that we swap back, we have to highlight retrograde again. And since we're about to eject this stage once we make orbit, um, I think we'll be fine. Our relay should be nicely connected to the station or the polar relay or Kerbin, so we won't have to deploy those communitrons here just yet. So we'll leave those closed. Let's go ahead and time warp to about a minute away from that periapsis, but before we do, manu uh, do a manual warp once. Didn't affect the periapsis, very good. Let's time warp in a little bit ahead, or I mean behind the periaps. It's staying nice and in line with that retro mark. Very good. Let's do a quick save. And once we're about 25 seconds away from that periaps, we will start our retro burn. I'm not sure just how much we'll have to take off from our orbital speed relative to Ike to make orbit, but we will find out. Let's warp ahead about halfway. We're close enough to not have to worry about doing a manual time warp now. Let's set our focus on our vessel, hitting the two sticks in, 
Alright, about 25 seconds away, we'll go full throttle by slowly picking it up to full throttle. And we have about a thousand meters per second. Yeah, about 1100 left. Should be enough to at least make orbit, I would say. Hopefully it's not an orbital speed of 300 or less. If so, well, we'll have a Ike relay at least. <laughs> you know, it's going to be a close periapse and a far apoapse, but we'll see. And we hopefully won't have to burn for more than 25 more seconds past the periapse, or else we'll start to reduce our periapse too much. But we'll find out. So now the clock is ticking. It's been about five seconds now. And we're just waiting to make that orbit. It's been about ten seconds. We have about 500 meters per second remaining. It's looking rough. It should at least end up making orbit around Duna. But if we don't make orbit around Ike, it will be at risk of crashing into Ike and not staying in orbit as a relay. How much do we have left? 200 meters per second. It's going to be close. We might have to cut the engine as soon as we make orbit and try to adjust that periaps. Let's find out. And as soon as we get that orbit, we'll cut. See how much we have left. 96 meters per second. Oof. That's rough. Um, let's go ahead and keep this. Actually, let's reduce that down to as close to 700,000 flush as possible without losing too much delta V. Once it gets to about 700,000, we'll cut it off and warp to the apoaptis. And on its way there, let's set it to prograde so it's pointing prograde automatically once it reaches the peri or apoapse. Once we get there, we'll finish whatever we have left in this stage to extend the Ike periapse. And we'll just use this as a relay. And that'll be okay. It made Ike orbit, that's what counts. So let's start extending that out. How much do we have left? Good little bit to be honest. We might be able to just get this up to 100,000. See what it looks like then. Alright, there's 100,000. Still have 77 left. We're gonna play around with this a little bit. Let's warp back to the periapsis, set it to retro, re highlight our apoapsis and our periapsis, and we'll reduce that down to 600,000. Then warp back to the other side and try to raise this to 200 and back and forth and back and forth. Okay, let's move this down to 600,000. See how much we have left. In fact, let's move it on down to 400,000. See what we have left. What do we have left? 57 meters per second. Let's try to increase it as close to 100,000 as possible then. This is still burning off speed for our landing on Ike, which is good. And also while we're doing this. Alright, so there's 109, 101, 100,000 on the periapsis by 106. That's good enough, I believe. There's still 6 meters per second left, so we don't want to waste it. Let's warp to the periapsis again. And we'll just reduce this apoapsis as close to 100,000 as possible, trying to use up the, less, uh, the rest of this fuel. And it'll at least act as a relay station, and it'll have a tank that we can refuel in the future if necessary using ISRU and mining vessels. So there's that. And it did get us into, into a nice, close, Ike orbit, which is good too. The trick here now is keeping all the outer tank stages on our lander 
actually, let's point normal and use the rest of this to try to rebalance our orbital line if possible instead. We'll find out what happens. Once it's there, let's go ahead and start burning. Alright, well that's a little better and that's the last of the fuel. Now it's time to disengage from our relay there. <clears throat> let's do a quick save just in case. And then we will stage. There's our lander. We just need to now try to... Alright, where's our command pods window? Okay, so we are going to turn left on our stick. And once we have it turned... No, let's turn right. Try not to redock accidentally either. There we go. And then once we are pointing at 270, we will decouple that bottom part. Make sure our throttle is all the way down. Just try to point it more radial out towards the surface at like 2. Once we're there, let's lock. And then we will decouple. Looks like the staging is incorrect. Where is that decoupler? Right there. Well, we don't have those active yet, so we may be staged correctly still. Let's find out. Let's stage after we quick save. And stage. Nice. Okay. It's not really going to send it to the surface of Ike, but it will keep this relay safe. Now we just need a point retrograde. Let's swap back to this. Now there's the problem. Oh wait, wrong part. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Alright, we have a connection. Good. And let's go ahead and stage just to stage that docking port and make it good. We will disengage the or disable the staging on that. Now it's time to Let's aim our camera at that communitron, extend it, make sure it looks good. It does, in fact, look good. Let's extend the other three. It already has plenty of connectivity, thanks to the relays, but you never know. You might be playing on moderate or hard, and you might need it. And if you do, there you go. Now, if I'm not mistaken, we have a contract to get some science from the space around Ike. Ah, oh, it's from the surface of Ike. Okay. Well, if you ever get a random contract after this for more science around uh, Ike, you can get that and score some easy money. But for now, let's swap back to our lander. Go to the map view and kick back out to fix our Kerbal icons. Let's make sure we're locked on retrograde and go ahead and boost. Now let's use our RCS by going to docking mode and hitting the right trigger to boost towards retrograde and away from our little station there, our relay fuel tank station. Once we're moving a little bit, we'll disengage the RCS, go back to staging mode, do a quick save, and it is time to stage our landing on Ike. Let's go back to our map view, and we want to be on the other side where it's just starting to turn to the day side of Ike. So let's go ahead and warp around to that side. Try to keep an eye on our other vessel and watch it very quickly disappear into space. If we zoom in, we can now actually see that we're connected to that relay and check its connections. It's quite nice. Now, let's highlight our periaps and our epoaps. Begin to retro burn until the periaps dips down to the other side of Ike down close to zero meters. Once it cuts off, there we go. 
we can warp ahead halfway between that point and where we are. Gotta watch our speed. It's gonna pick up when you just switch to surface mode. And then let's go back to this view. Now we need to bleed our speed off to about half of where it is now. Which will be about... Let's go for about 130. Now you see that dark spot there? That's kind of where I'm aiming to land. Because it should be nice and level there. So I'm going to put the trajectory to where that is in between us and the end of it. I'm going to time warp ahead just a hair between where I want to land and where I am. And once it's there, I'm going to reduce the speed again to where it's just a little beyond it. And then warp until I'm about on the edge of that area a little before it. I'm going to keep warping because it's going to take us closer to that point I want to be at each time I do it. Move it in just a little bit again in anticipation for it. Warp again. It's only warping 30 seconds this time. Let's warp again towards the edge of it. Should be maybe 20 seconds. And this is where I'm going to prepare to land and bleed off all that speed once we are right above all that gray spots. Let's just go ahead and activate our landing gear. And I'm going to rotate to where, let's see, the direction that we're falling in is, let's see, towards the dark side, the sun's over there. So that'll be, if I'm not mistaken, let's take a look and watch the ground. It needs to be lined up like this for the landing gear to be efficient. You don't want it to be like this because then one side of your landing gear is going to hit the ground and it's not going to be as stable. You want it to be more in line with your 90 and your 270 mark to the sides, the way this craft is. Ah, I got that wrong. You need to rotate it towards 225 and 45 at the sides, the way this craft is assembled, I believe. No, a little further. 180 and north at the sides. There we go. Now we're coming in like we should be. Now let's uh, time warp ahead down to about 20,000 meters. Once we hit there, we'll cut off. It may even automatically cut off, but we'll find out. Nope, okay. We're going to cut it off ourselves. And we're going to quick save. And we're going to bleed our speed down to about 150 meters per second. Again, we are going to have to take every one of these tanks with us and not eject any of them. It's very important. Let's uh, go ahead and stage that docking port so it doesn't interrupt us later in case we hit a crucial moment. Let's quick save. See, we're a little off from the gray, aren't we? We're trying to land somewhere nice and flat. You need to keep an eye on that. Thinking we're going to be okay. Let's go ahead and reduce it down to about 50. Just in case. I'm trying to land right over top of where we are now. It's looking okay. Reduce to 50. Let's do a quick save. Because we can always correct it from here in case anything happens. Let's go ahead and time warp down close or till 100 meters per second. Looks like we're going to have to stop at 100 meters per second. Uh, 
little closer. There we go. All right, let's cut that time warp. You can see our shadow right below us. We're moving in at a decent pace. Looks like we might be landing at about another 3,000 meters or so to go. I'm going to time warp ahead just a little more. Because we're coming in kind of fast, but kind of not. There we go. This is where I'm going to start cutting the speed down to about 50 again. Let's activate our SES, I mean our RCS. And make sure to watch our speed the closer we get. We don't want to land any more than about 5 meters per second if we can help it less if we can. Let's go ahead and turn those on to start reducing our speed. We want to be able to reduce that speed. We're going to bring it down to about 20 meters per second now. Cut, increase, very slowly decreasing. Once it's down to about 10 meters, we want it to slow the speed very slowly as we descend still. Once we get close, let's deactivate the SCS, reactivate it throttle up, and land. Let's turn our brakes on. Make sure to stay pointing towards the sky. And once we stop bouncing and have landed, we'll turn our SES off. Let it stabilize. We can even disengage our landing gear to put ourselves on our engines and then re-engage the landing gear. Turn our RCS off. So the landing gear is deployed nice and properly once it locks. There we go. Making some use of that one outer stage landing gear. Let's go ahead and quick save and begin our mission here on the surface of Ike. <clears throat> now that we're here, let's check our mission itinerary. Once we plant this flag, we need to go back to the space center and see if we can score any more contracts. Let's get Valentina out here to plant a flag. And once again, once you're here on the ladder, kind of take it easy and then continue. We need to probably swap back to the vessel to extend this ladder I forgot to extend. But we'll try to extend it from here. Okay, cool. Now, once it deploys, we'll get down to the surface and plant our flag. We've planted one on Kerbin, one on the Mun, and one on Minmus. This will be our fourth flag. So let's let go. Try not to hit that landing gear to make the vessel bounce or anything. Let's go a decent amount away. And there's the sun's line, so we want to point towards the north side and plant our flag that way. The sun's right on top of us, so you won't really see why right now, but when the sun's at the side, it'll light up the flag a lot better that way. And we're going to name this flag number four because it is our fourth flag in the tutorial. Now let's quick save. And that should be enough to complete that contract. Good. Let's go back to the Space Center now to see if we can score any more contracts while we're here. It's a shame we're not really going to be able to do the dock and transfer around Ike, which means we might have to come back and do that. But we'll find out. There might be enough Delta V in that other orbital station around Duna to take them both there to Ike and do that before we leave. But we need to keep in mind that we need to have enough to make it back. So we're not going to do that right off. We're going to complete what our contracts have us completing first. Which is return to Kerbin from the surface of Ike. So it is time to go ahead and land on Duna while we're at it too just to knock that out while we're here. So I also accepted the data from the space around Ike. 
which we can get in the form of an EVA after we take off. It will still count. Uh, plant a flag on Duna. There's that. And it's looking like that's all we're going to have now. So we have quite a bit to do still. Let's go ahead and make a quick save again. Or let's make it a main save so we don't save over top of that quick save just in case. And we'll go back to our tracking station. And we can get rid of some debris real quick and then hop back in our lander and finish up more of these missions. Let's go ahead and terminate that debris and terminate this debris. And especially this one just in case it decides to smash into one of the or the relay around Ike. And then let's uh let's go back to our vessel. Which is the D2 and hop in it. We'll leave Valentina on the surface for now. There's nothing else for her to do just yet until it's time to leave. For now it's time for our scientists and our engineer to do their jobs. We have about 20 minutes or so to spare, I believe. So this will go on to about an hour and 36 minutes for the episode length, maybe. Hopefully we can get the Duna landing done, and then we'll pick up from there in the next episode. Alright, let's get our engineer out first, and we will grab the package that we made for Ike, starting with the control station, leaving it open. Let's uh, activate our lights. Climb on down. We'll just let him fall if he does. That's fine. We'll activate our RCS. And our SAS. Let's see if we can spot a rock while we're looking around for a spot to put these. Not seeing any rocks nearby. Alright, so let's just go ahead and place this here. Once we do that, let's go on ahead and move back over to our web until 11.10 Eastern Time. Let's place this, activate our RCS, boost back over here, and grab our command pod, making sure not to approach it too quickly to knock into it. Uh -oh. Okay, there we go. Alrighty then. Let's grab the Communitron. Put it in our inventory. And go back over here. Once we let go, we'll activate the RCS and boost on over here. And we're going to take the Communitron and stick it on the high side of this slope be better only by a little for the sake of communication connectivity. There will be some blind spots, but it'll be okay. Let's reactivate our RCS go over here and grab the photovoltaic panel. Oh, buddy, you're a little wild today, aren't you there, Bill? There we go. Now let's hop on down. And we'll see how much power we get off of this whenever a level 4 engineer places it. Especially one of the original 4 kerbals. But for now, let's go over here and place it about here. And once it's deployed, we will take a look and see just what kind of connection we're looking at. That's kind of a rough spot to put that, actually. I'm going to move a little closer. Highlight it again. Once it's deployed, I'm going to grab it. Say, pick up part. And once we have it picked up, 
I'm going to move over just a little bit, place this a little further away this time so it doesn't become an issue when we time warp. I don't want them knocking into one another and blowing each other up. Alright, now once that's deployed, again, let's find out just how much of a bonus we get from a level 5 original 4 Kerbin engineer. Four units of power. Nice, that's enough to power everything, I believe. Let's see, this requires one. This requires two. Okay, so, uh, well, actually, no, it requires one. Total power available is four. Two is because we have that and this placed. Okay, let's swap to our vessel after turning Valentina's lights on. There we go. And let's get Bob out here to finish the job. EVA, turn your lights on. Now it's time to grab some science. Actually, get back in the pod. Grab a crew report first, so we can knock that out of the way. And once we get the crew report, we will then go ahead and start preparing the science for, for Bob by observing the mystery goo, then our parametric reading, our seismic reading, and our temperature reading. Get some decent science if we return all this, and hopefully we're going to do that. That's the plan. Once all that's prepped and ready for Bob, we will EVA Bob and see if he can reach that seismometer since it's nice and high on this. Doesn't look like that's going to be the case. That's why we have the ladder on the other side. It's going to come in handy on Duna. So let's grab this mystery goo and we'll reset that canister or restore it. Let's grab this barometric reading and let's grab our temperature reading and we'll grab our crew report out of the command pod, freeing up space there. While we're at it, let's grab the surface sample from our Kerbin here. And then we will do our EVA report from the surface of Ike. Whoa, okay. Let's try that again. There we go. From the Midlands. And then we will climb up, and once we get up here, let's activate our RCS. Let's try that again, shall we? Zoom in a little bit. Climb up here, and then climb up on top of the vessel. And then we will grab our seismic data, and then activate our RCS. Before we go boosting off though, let's highlight our command pod and store all that stuff in there. And then, oh, we still need to grab our breaking ground modules, don't we? Let's do that. Starting with the goo ebb monitor. We'll take that over here to this side of the control module and place it pretty much right beside of that control module ahead a little bit. There we go. We'll place that right there. Reactivate our RCS. That should be deploying nicely on its own there. Yep, okay. Let's go on ahead and go over here and grab our command pod. We're close enough now to get our next module. Oh yeah, it's looking like that's it for um, Ike. I believe, yeah. We still have a couple extra photovoltaic panels to take home with us to get refurbished for, or reimbursed for, that's okay. I believe that's all we can do here. I'm gonna get back on the ground for a second. Try to place these kerbals in a nice spot for some pictures later. Put you next to your science again. Oh. 
deactivate that, get a little closer. That'll make for a nice picture or two later. Alright, now let's, uh, let's try to find a rock to bring back with us, sh shall we? Zoom out a little bit, see if we can find one nearby. If there are any on Ike. There should be some surface features, but we'll find out. I'm not seeing anything. Not seeing a thing. I guess there's nothing here on Ike to take home. Might explain why there isn't a contract for it either. I'm not seeing squat. Remember there used to be a magic asteroid in orbit around this place. Not sure what happened to that though. Oh, oh, I see something over there in the distance. Let's aim at it. Hopefully it's not something that requires a rover. Let's check our uh, EVA backpack fuel. Make sure it's highlighted. Activate our RCS and let's go over there and see what that is. It's not too far away. Just right over there. You can see it right to the right of Bob's head. Make our way over here. Yeah, that looks like a moonstone that we can bring back with us. Let's slow down. Why is it red though? That's interesting. Let's get right up on it where it says we can climb it. Then we should be able to take a bite out of this thing. Normally I get my pilots to do this, but hey, we might get more using a scientist. Let's keep that open and see if it pops up. Ah, do not eject her. So that's where you find it. I thought you had to find it on Duna. There we go. Let's grab that. That's pretty cool. So I guess that's a piece of Duna that made its way to its moon. That's pretty awesome. Very cool. Let's grab that. And let's get out of here. <coughs> Before a Kraken happens to come by and see us doing some stuff we probably shouldn't be doing over here. Doesn't want us finding out the mysteries of the Kerbal system. It tries to stop us and thwart our plans at every opportunity. Alright, let's slow down a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's get you back in here. Grab, climb, and board. Now let's get these other Kerbals back in here, so we can head to the Red Planet. And let's check our time. It's getting close. Might end up not being able to land on Duna in this episode, but we'll find out. Really depends on when I get the call. Let's go on ahead and board. Get uh, Valentina in here quickly. And we have our breaking ground modules fully deployed and ready to science the heck out of Ike. Alright, let's get ready to get out of here. Get up on in there. It's time to leave. Alright, we are back. We have a good bit of Delta V in this thing still. Let's save and prepared to head to Duna. Let's find out where we are relative to Duna right now. We're on the side, so we're going to have to make orbit. But that's okay. We can do it. We just have to make sure that we point towards the 90 degree angle. Turn the SAS on. Turn off the brakes. Let's go ahead and also deactivate our landing gear since it's safe to do so. And... Let's take flight. If I'm not mistaken, down is up. <laughs> so let's go down on the stick to point. Towards the 90 degree mark, lock the SAS. We also probably should do something about that ladder, shouldn't we? I can't remember what our orbital speed was. I think it was close to 300 then. We're going to extend the apoapsis out to about 
15,000 or so. Maybe 20 to be safe. Once it's there, let's lock prograde. And we are very close to being out of fuel in the first of the two outer stages. We're going to be less uh, efficient with our engines. But hopefully there will be enough fuel on that station to refill ourselves. If not, we'll have to make do. Alright, let's go ahead and time warp ahead to about a minute away from that. Maybe a little less, we'll find out. Might be 45 seconds away or so, but that's okay. Once we're there, we'll let it reorient back towards prograde. It's going to be very close. We might just have to make orbit around the Ike and then call it there. Let's move to about 20 seconds away little under and hurry and make this orbit. I would really like to be able to dock up with that station before cutting the episode. Let's reduce the speed to about a sixth throttle. And let this finish doing its thing. Once we're right over top of that apoapsis, if we still... Okay, about five seconds away from it, we'll pick speed back up again. Speed. Okay, pick up a little more. Alright then, go full throttle. <laughs> now it's starting to push the... Oh, I'm still not pushing the apoapsis. Might be perfectly where it needs to be. Yep, there it goes. <laughs> Alright, now we just need to put ourselves between Ike and Duna. It should be about... I want to say... here. Once we get there, we'll quick save. Let it realign to prograde. And we will begin our Duna transfer try to dock up with this station quickly if possible by setting it as our target first we need to bring our line in to about a hundred thousand and we'll see what happens once we get to that line uh, we're gonna have to rapidly go through the next series of events I hope I don't move too quickly if so, you can always just double tap that screen and rewind a little bit if necessary. Alright, we are almost where it needs to be. Let's let it reorient. Once it does, we will quick save. Warp ahead just a tad more. Which I believe will be about here. Let's zoom out. And the second it's done time warping and reorients to prograde, we're going to kick it up to full throttle. But we're going to do it nice and smooth as we usually do, or try to. And reorient, locked, throttle up. Let's keep an eye for that to pop over there on the other side of Duna, about here. Highlight it very quickly. Try to bring it into 100,000. There we go. Let's cut the engine, highlight it. it down to about a hundred thousand. That's off a bit, isn't it? That's a shame. Once it's close to about a hundred thousand, we will cut the engine. A little more. There we go. Let's do a quick save. Now I'm curious if we point normal and highlight the ascent node. Start to burn a little nope. Okay, let's point anti-normal. Let's keep an eye on those ascending and descending nodes and see just how far we can correct those right now. Once it slows down, we'll know that we're close to as far as we can get it. bring it in real close. How about that? Right uh, about there should be good. Let's quick save. Now, here's the bad part. We're going to have to warp to our periapsis and burn retro to make the encounter. 
due to our positioning. So let's go on ahead and leave Ike Sphere of Influence by manually time warping ahead nice and slowly. And then once we leave Ike's Influence, we'll lock ourselves retrograde in advance and then set ourselves to warp to about here. And once we get there, and we're really close to that periapse, we will begin to retro burn until we get an encounter with either our intersect node 1 or the second one. Most likely the second one, I would say, but we'll find out. Let's go ahead and highlight that. If we can. There we go. And we may try to go ahead and correct our descending node while we're at it as well. But for now, we need to try to get the encounter. That's the more important thing. Trying not to waste too much fuel right now. Because <clears throat> I can't rightly recall how much we have on that station. But once we're reoriented, we will go ahead and get nice and close behind that periapse. Let's go ahead and warp there. And then it'll be time to try to get the encounter before we hit that descending node. So we can try to do both. Now, the best thing we can do very quickly actually Go to our engines on the outside and deactivate them. And try to focus on just using the poodle if possible. That way we only have one engine to worry about controlling while we do all this. And it should still be strong enough to do what we're trying to do with all that mass. Now let's go ahead and try to do this until that encounter 2 node comes back around and cut it right there. Now we need to reduce the thrust limiter as close to zero as possible on the poodle. But not full zero. That'll work. Okay, now let's highlight that node again and slowly bring that to as close to zero kilometer separation as possible. It's coming in nice and close. I believe we need to stop, go to normal, and try to get this descending node corrected now as quickly as possible. And then we will continue zeroing in our separation. But let's do a quick save now while we already have a decent separation in case something happens. Let's go ahead and do our normal burn until it, the descending node is pretty much right on top of that encounter or separation. It's moving slow, but once it gets closer to that spot, we're going to want it to be moving slow. going to pick up speed really quick once it gets close to that intersection as it continues to build up speed right now as we speak. Once it starts to pass that periapse it will get really quick. We'll have to reduce our throttle a little bit the closer it gets to that intersect node. Just how fast it's going until it's right on top, and then we'll know it's perfect. Once it's right on top of the target node. Right there. Now let's go back to retro. And let's try to bring that two kilometer separation in to zero. Or at least as close to it as possible. Okay, we need to highlight that again now that they swapped. And... Oh, look at that. Nailed it. Alright. Our relative speed is 295. Plenty of delta B to finish that off. Let's put our thrust limiter back at full. 
do a quick save just in case our warp messes this up a little bit. Let's swap to target mode and begin to warp to our encounter or our intersect. Let's manual warp a little bit. Didn't hurt it too bad, that's fine. So 316, that's 315. Need to be a little further away than that. I think that'll be good. So let's try to dock this up real quick before I get a phone call. <laughs> Now that should rapidly increase the warp here in a moment. And we'll be on the other side in no time. Avoiding Ike. Very good. <laughs> it would have sucked to have smashed right into Ike. That would have ruined everything now, wouldn't it have? Alright, now we should be able to see the station. Let's rotate until we do. How far is it? 35... Okay, so we'll warp about halfway forward. That'll put it at about 15 kilometers, I would say. Once it hits 15 kilometers, we're going to slow down to about 100 meters per second relative to the target. Let's continue warping manually until it hits about 15. And stop. And crank that engine up. Poodle's barely slowing it down enough. It's gonna have to move quick here. Find the engines that have fuel. Oh well, okay. Let's turn on these engines and try not to just straight pass by this encounter. Very quickly come now. Alright, activate. Gonna burn the rest of those outer engines, I suppose. But we need it quickly. We're moving them pretty fast. Let's also go to our docking mode, activate our RCS, hold the right trigger to try to help that speed re re reduce faster. Looks like it's gonna be a little hairy. We'll go ahead and try to reduce it to about 50 meters. 